أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا فعلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين آمين So at the beginning I love to give you this hadith and this hadith is really encouraging everyone عن أبي أمامة الباهلي رضي الله عنه This is authentic hadith He said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever come to the masjid to learn to learn his deen or to teach he will be getting the reward of hajj completely hajj so you are here listening to the hadith of the prophet sallam you are learning your deen your reward is the same reward of hajj what a blessings from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this alhamdulillah so before i continue with this the hadith about Ashab al ukhdud I just want to remind myself and remind my brothers about the benefits of these 10 days of the Hijjah. And I don't want to go into much details. I will just give you a brief. The scholars, they said, these days is the days of love. These days are the days of love. Whomever, whomever wants to know how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him, he should see how much Allah opened for him the gates of mercy and the gates of good deeds. Very simple. This is the days of love. If you want to know how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, see how much Allah has opened for you the gates of good deeds. And I leave the rest with you. You know what to do. If you really want to know which is the most beloved good deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, The Prophet ﷺ, he told us, فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهَا means increase your saying, takbir, tahmeed, tahleel, and tasbih. Means, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiyallahu anhu, he said, if there will be a two person, one of them has a a bunch of money and they are sitting in the street and this fellow is giving money to everyone passed by him while the other one is just doing takbir he said by Allah the one who is doing takbir reward is more, the, uh, more than the other person who is spending his money for everyone passed by him so now you know what to do. I don't want to go into more details. Let us continue with the very blessed and very emotional and informative hadith from the Prophet wasallam. So the summary for those who wasn't here in the last lecture. So the Prophet wasallam. He said in this authentic hadith, 
It is about a story of an atheist king. And that king, he used to have a magician to help him in controlling the people. And when the magician becomes too old and he saw that he is going to die, he asked the king to choose a person, a young boy, so that he will teach him his magic. So after a lot of processes and screening, so the king find a very smart boy and he bring him to the king. And he bring him to the magician, sorry. So this boy, he's young and in Arabic, Ghulam means a young youth, means 12, 13 years of old. So every time this boy used to go to the magician to learn what he knows, he find a small place where was a priest was hiding himself and he worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his curiosity pushed him to go to that priest. So he start learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about the deen and about the day after and about the dunya and about the prophets alayhim salam from the priest. And that priest was on the right deen after Jesus Isa alayhi salam passed away. There was just a few people who stick to the origin, to the, to the, to the right religion of Isa alayhi salam. So that priest was among them. And we know, I told you why those priests were hiding. And they know if they were captured, they will be killed. So that's why they were hiding. And the important thing that the priest he was hiding, yes, and he was away from dealing with people and any social events because he don't want anybody to know about him. But when this boy comes to him, he said, this is an opportunity for me to teach the deen of Allah. And what we notice that that kingdom or that country or that place the people were away from the deen. They don't know anything about the deen. They don't know about if the magician is correct or doing right or doing wrong. They don't know what's going on. So that's why when the boy goes to the magician, he accepts what he's learning. But by his nature, he starts going to the priest and learn the true deen. And he finds himself more closer to the priest than the magician. So then when this boy comes into a, a certain time where he starts thinking which way to go, to the priest or to the magician, so he was confused, but he wants a proof. So one time when he was going back to his family, he found one animal and the big animal was on the road, which is preventing people from going to their work or going here and there. So everybody was scared from this animal. So what this boy did, he catch a small stone, a regular stone. And he said, Oh Allah, I ask you, if the priest knowledge is more correct to you, so kill this animal with this stone. And he throw the stone to the animal and the animal passed away immediately. And that was a proof from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this boy that the religion is the one you learn it from the priest. Now, we'll continue from here. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, after he killed that animal, he went to the priest and he told him what happened with him. Then he said, the priest said, Oh my son, today you are much better than me. And I see what I saw from you and you are going to be tested. 
you are going to be tested. So if this, hap if this happened, don't tell them about me. Don't tell them about me. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, the boy used to cure the blind people. The blind. Al-Akmah. And Al-Akmah in Arabic means those person who was born blind. This is called Al-Akmah. And Al-Abras, the one who was having a leprosy disease in their skin. So that boy was given this karama. It is called a blessings from Allah that he was able to cure this difficult disease or difficult situation. And he used to cure the people from many of their disease. And everybody knows about him now. Then the minister of the king, he heard about the boy. And that minister becomes blind before some time. And he couldn't find a cure. So he went to the boy and he took with him a lot of gifts. So imagine... A person like this, a minister, how much power he has, how much money he has, and he wants to get cured because he is blind. So he took as much as he can of gifts and money, gold, whatever it is. And then he told the boy, all these gifts will be for you if you cure me and make me to see again. Then the boy said, I am not curing anyone. Indeed, he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who cure the disease. So if you believe in Allah, then I will make dua for you and Allah will cure you. Then that minister, he accept and he believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He become a Muslim. And then the boy make dua for him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal his eyes and he become to see back again. Then that minister go back to the king and he sat with him. Then the king saw that this fellow is, can see now. Then he asked him, who cured your eyes? Then he said, my Lord, cure me. Then he said, do you have another Lord, another Rabb other than me? That is the king. Then he said, my Lord and your Lord is Allah. Then the king took him and he started torturing him until he told him about the boy. Then the king called the boy and he asked him, Oh, my son, it looks like your magic becomes so powerful and you become able to cure the blind and the people who are having a leprosy skin disease and many other things. Then the boy said, I am not curing anyone. Indeed, he is Allah who cure everyone. Then the king took him and start torturing the boy until the boy told him about the priest. Then they called the priest. They bring him to the king and they ask him, go back from your deen. Change your deen. The priest refused. Then again they asked him. He refused. Then they brought a saw. And they put the saw on the top of his head. He refused to go back from his deen. And they cut him into two halves. In front of everyone. And then the king asked the minister. Go back from your deen. Change your deen. 
he refused. Then again, they put the saw on the top of his head and they cut him into two halves. And then they brought the boy and they asked him, change your deen. The boy refused. So this is the second part of the story. As I told you, this is a long story. It's going to take one more lecture, inshallah. But look to the benefits and the wisdom with every little word in this story. So what we notice here that the boy got a special blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is able to cure the most difficult disease at that time. And even now, still it is difficult. So we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is blessing some special people with a special, special gifts. For example, Maryam alayha salam, when Zakaria entered her mihrab where she used to pray فلما دخل عليها زكريا المحراب وجد عندها رزقا he found a special رزق with her أنا لك هذا he asked her from where you have this قالت هو من عند الله إن الله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب it is from Allah whomever Allah wants he will give him the رزق whenever he wants and how much he likes Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they said the rizq which she used to have is the fruits of the summer in the winter time and the fruit of the winter in the summer time, which is something very odd. And look to the people of the cave, Ashabul Kahf, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them to sleep 309 years and they wake up as if they just sleep last night. Without long hair, without long nails, they just wake up normal. So the people, when they went to buy food, they didn't recognize that those people were sleeping 309 years. So they were just normal, perfect. And look to the Khalid ibn al-Walid, radiallahu anhu. One time Khalid, after he defeated Musaylam al-Kadhab in al-Yamama, so he went to Al-Hira, which is south of, uh, south of Iraq, somewhere between Iraq and Syria. Al-Hira, it is called. So he found the castle and he surrounded that castle. And the people, they were inside. They start throwing them with the stones. Until the stones is over, they started throwing them with, the, with their plates, the plates of the food, until they end up. Then the, the surrounding never finish so they decided they decided to ask what he wants so khalid ibn walid he sent them a messenger come and let's talk stop what you are doing so they send one very old man from them who is more wise so he come to khalid radiyallahu anhu khalid ibn walid and he asked him when he see him khalid ask him what do you have with your hand he said, I have a poison. It's a cold, a very fast poison. Within one hour, you will die. He said, why you bring it with you? He said, I come to bargain you. If you really claim that you are on the right and you are the people of Islam, you are on the right religion, show me something which proves me wrong. Then Khalid said, he took the poison and he said, بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم and he eat the poison رضي الله عنه خالد بن الوليد so he eat the poison and nothing happened to خالد and that person when he saw that he ran back to his people and he said you surrender to these people these people they are like شيطان nothing can affect them so the second karama, for example, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas in the battle of Al-Qadisiyah, there was, there was the river between them and Al-Furs, the Persians. So how to cross the river and they don't have boats? So Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas decided to cross the, the river with the horses. 
So the horses cross and walk on the top of the water and they did not get wet. When the Persians saw them walking on the top of the river, they ran away. They said, these are devils. We cannot fight those people. And then Hubayb ibn Adi, radiyallahu anhu, one from the companion, when he was captured prisoner with Quraysh, and they put him in one of the house, and they locked them, and they chained him. The woman, she was having that house. She's the owner of the house. She used to give food for him. She said after that, when she become Muslim, she said, by Allah, I used to go and want to give food for Hubayb. I used to see him eating grapes while there is no grapes in Mecca at all. No grapes. Imagine, no grapes. From where this comes? Inna Allah yarzuqu man yasha hisab. So, this is just a few things, few blessings, which Allah give it as a special gift for those people. So now, we, we in this time, during this, we hear many people, they have this kind of blessings, but we should know one thing very important, that those blessings Allah give it to the people because they are on the right path, they are following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So if someone claim that he has some special gifts from Allah, you should see if he is really on the right path, if he is following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, then you believe what he is doing. Other than that, he is considered as either fake, lying, or what he is claiming is all lies. Or he is dealing with jinn and he's having support from the jinn. So the first trick here, you have to check if that person really following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and following the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Al-Imam al-Shafi'i said about this subject, if you see a man flying in the air or walking on the water, so don't, don't believe that he is having a special gift from Allah until you will see that he is following the sunnah. So that is the, the guides here. And then we saw that this boy, he told the priest and the priest, he accept what the boy told him and he was so pious and so, you know, moderate and he told the boy, you are now better than me. So he confessed and he told the boy, you are better than me. And you are going to be tested. And this is the sunnah in life. You are going to be tested. So when you are going to be tested, don't tell them about me. Because he knows that they are going to kill him. So this is the idea. If you know that there is something going to harm you, stay away from it. That's very basic. Stay away from it. You don't need to show, you don't need to show that you are Superman. We are not super. But indeed, if there is anything that you can challenge the kufr, challenge them, but in a way not to harm you or harm your family. <clears throat> Al-Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah, his student was Al-Imam Ahmad. Ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah. So Al-Imam al-Shafi'i, he used to ask Al-Imam Ahmad about the hadith because Al-Imam Ahmad was so great in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And he has the book, Musnad Al-Imam Ahmad. It is about the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. So Al-Imam al-Shafi'i, he didn't have any struggle to ask his student, Al-Imam Ahmad, about anything in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is how the scholars and the people with knowledge, they deal with each other. They respect each other and they confess, they agree that this person is better than me. And that's what the priests say to the boy. Even he was a boy, he didn't hesitate and he didn't find it difficult to say you are better than me. Even though he used to worship Allah and learn and he knows and he has a knowledge more than 
that boy. And then look to Khalid ibn al-Walid, for example, radiallahu anhu, he just embraced Islam two years before the opening of Mecca. While Amr ibn al-As, he just embraced Islam just before opening Mecca with a few months. While Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, he embraced Islam, the last one of the ten Mubashireen bil Jannah, the ten who the Prophet وسلم, told them that they are from the people of Jannah. So even though Umar ibn al-Khattab, he was the last one, but look how much he worked, how much he did, then he become the second one after Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. And then Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, radiallahu anhu, his total life in Islam was only six years. But when he died, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu said, Ihtazza, Arsh rahman the throne of Allah vibrates when Sa'd ibn Mu'adh passed away. Why? The scholars said, he, they said the throne of Allah was happy that the soul of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh is coming, is coming up there. So imagine the six years, how much he did for Islam and how much he reached in that level. Umar ibn Khattab, how much he reached and how much he make for the Muslimin and so on. So it doesn't matter how much we are late. Still there is few days remaining for these 10 days of the Hijjah. There is, a, there is a lot of time and enough and plenty of time for you to do whatever you can. So don't say I, I lost already five days or six days. Start from now. You, you still struggle in memorizing Al-Quran. Some sheikh, they memorize it from their elder age, uh, younger age, but you're still old and you think, oh, I cannot make it. So try, start from now. Don't say I cannot make it. It is easy because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you that he make it easy for you. You didn't even ask. You don't need to ask even because Allah already make it easy for you. So easy for you to memorize, easy for you to read, easy for you to understand, easy for you to make tadabbur and to think about the verses of Allah. So don't say, I am too old. By Allah, I know one of the brothers. He started memorizing Al-Quran when he was 70 years. And he completed Khatm Al-Quran when he became 80 years. It took him 10 years, but he make it. He make it. Imagine how much blessings and good deeds he got when he has Al-Quran reserved in his heart. When he meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Quran will be shafi'ah for him, will make shafa'ah for him on the day of judgment. And not only that, in the grave, when he go to the grave, Al-Quran will be with him, will be his supported, will be his friend, will be his accompany in the grave. So, again, we saw that boy, when he reached to that stage, he said that he will be tested. And this is the normal thing. So don't think that when you, when you start doing more good deeds, life is uh, green, it's a spring always, there will be struggles. That's the normal life. We will struggle in our life. And this is how we, we gain more good deeds. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, يُبْتَلَ الْمَرْءُ بِحَسَبِ دِينِهِ means your tests, will be according to your level of Iman, of belief. How much your belief, if it is weak, then your tests, maybe not, there is no test, maybe less, maybe more. It depends how much level of faith and level of aqeedah in your heart, you will be tested. So either you will be tested with your family, with your wife, with your children, or with your work, or with your colleagues, or with your big family, or whatever, with your job, whatever it is, there will be some tests is going to happen to you as long as you are Muslim. Why the test? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is giving you tests the same way when you are 
at school. Why they are giving you tests? In order to upgrade you. When you are from grade six, you want to go to grade seven, so there is a test. Again, when you finish high school, you want to go to university, there is a test. When you are in, at level one to level two and so on. This is why the tests are there. It is to upgrade your level and degree with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then that minister, when he hear about the boy, how smart and how he's, he's capable to heal this difficult disease, he brought him everything, a lot of gifts, a lot of money, a lot of golds, because he's blind. He wants his eyes back. So the boy give him a lesson, give him a big lesson, because that minister is a material man. He knows about everything by dollar, by money, by gold, right? But that boy give him a big hit when he told him, I am not curing anyone. He is Allah. He even didn't look to the gifts and the money and the gold which that minister bring to him. And then he, the boy, he said, if you are really wants to get cured, you have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the way, this is the way we bargain with people. Like Yusuf alayhi salam, Yusuf alayhi salam, when he was in the prison, so the two prisoners, they come to him and they ask him to give him tafsir for the dream, right? To explain the dream. So he, he said, I will tell you about the tafsir of the dream, but he start calling them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So this is the way. And this is the way the Christians, they are using in Africa. They go there, they help the people, they give food and shelter, and they call them to Christianity. And we Muslim, we should do better than this. We should give them. And I know there is a lot, alhamdulillah, of Muslim um, jamaat and Muslim people. They go there and they are using the same idea. They call people, give them help, give them shelter, medicals, etc. And they call them to Islam. You know, and then that boy, imagine if he wants to become a rich and the very rich, he was able. And everybody knows him that he is curing their disease. He's helping them. And if he wants money, if he wants a level and degree, he could have it. But he never looked to this at all because he believed that the rizq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not using the gifts which Allah gave to him. He is not using it for his own personal use, not for his living. He is not using that for his living. He is only wants people to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that was his way when he is helping people and he was so socialized, so he become very known. And now we know why the king, he asked him, go back from your deen. He didn't do with him like what he did with the priest and like what he did with the minister. You know, the priest and the minister, immediately he killed them. But with the boy, it's a different scenario. Why? Because the boy is very famous now. Everyone likes him because he used to help everyone. He used to support them and go to them and help them cure their disease and help them in their life. Now he become very social. He is very, very famous in the media. Now the king he said, uh, I have to do something else with this boy. So what the king is going to do with this boy, that will be the next lecture insha'Allah, because this boy is really amazing. How he resists the king and how the story ends, how the story ends and the boy defeated the king. Subhanallah. والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم اجمعنا على ما يرضيك واجعلنا من المتحابين فيك اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مباركا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده معصوما 
ولا تجعل منا ولا فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار اللهم إنا نسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك ومنجيات أمرك والسلامة من كل إثم والغنيمة من كل بر ورضاك والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار اللهم ارزقنا يا رب لذة النظر إلى وجهك الكريم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك أن تجزل لنا عطاءك وأن تكرمنا يا ربنا بثواب الحج يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن منعنا يا ربي ظروفنا ولم نستطيع اللحاق بالرقب فلا تحرمنا من الأجر والثواب برحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم من علينا واغفر لنا وبلغنا يوم عرفة واجعلنا فيه من المعتقين يا أرحم الراحمين اجعلنا ممن تباهي بهم الملائكة في يوم عرفة يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم تب علينا اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم اشف مرضانا وعافي مبتلانا وارحم موتانا وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم تول أمرنا ولا تسلط علينا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا ولا تؤاخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا إنك أنت الكريم الرحيم وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك جزاك